In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can create the vectors for the magic bean sign that you can see here. We're going to walk you through the various ways that you can create vectors in the software. We'll show you how you can edit vectors, and we'll also show you how you can create and edit text. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go ahead and create a new file. So working with a single sided job and the width that we're going to apply here is going to be 24 inches. The height for this job will be 36 inches. Uh, the thickness for this is going to be one inch. We're going to set our Z zero position on the material surface and our X, Y datum position. We're going to put that in the center of our job. We can see that that's indicated by the red square in the center there. So here we're just going to go ahead and press OK. So as this is a drawing exercise, I just want to take a moment to review my snap options. So if you head over to edit and then you can access your snap options using this option here or the shortcut key for this is F4 on your keyboard. And if we click on that, they'll open up our snapping options dialog box. So looking at the settings uh, within our snap options, I can see that geometry snapping is switched on. We've got a checkbox there, as do we have smart snapping switched on. Now, not only can I tell that those are switched on from this dialog box, but if we take a look in the main interface, uh, in particular, if we take a look at this view toolbar at the top, I can see that we have this option here switched on as it's shaded blue, and this option represents geometry snapping. This option here represents smart snapping. They're both switched on because they're shaded blue. And I can toggle them on and off directly from the interface without having to go into our snap options form. This option here represents our snap grid. It's not shaded blue because it isn't switched on. We don't have a checkbox here. So smart snapping will be really helpful to me in drawing this sign up as it allows me to snap to lines and extensions that don't exist as geometry. And so this really makes it quicker and easier for me to draw shapes and align objects to in the software. And you'll see this demonstrated throughout this tutorial. Then we have snapping radius. So by default, this is at 10 pixels. Now, as I'm creating quite basic geometry, I'm going to keep my snap radius set to 10 pixels. And again, it just makes it quicker and easier for me to create my geometry. Now, these are the settings that I prefer for this type of work, but you may find that you want to play around with the radius settings to find the most comfortable setting for yourself. Now, if you want to learn more about the snapping options, there is a tutorial called Introduction to Vector Drawing that covers all of these options in much greater detail. OK, so I'm happy with the settings we've got here, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK. So now we're going to look at drawing the vectors that will form the base shape of our sign. We're going to start by looking at drawing a rectangle. So in here, we're in the draw rectangle form and I've got several options in order for us to create the rectangle. To start with, we're going to start our anchor point where X is going to be at zero and Y will also be at zero, which is at this point here. And we're going to create our rectangle based on the anchor point being in the center. Corner type, we're going for a square corner. Here I can input my width, so we're going to go with a width of 15 inches and a height of 30 inches, and then simply go ahead, press create, and there is our rectangle. So let's close out. So now we're going to look at drawing a circle. So under create vectors, we've got the option here to draw a circle. Now, rather than enter values within this form, I can look at manually drawing the circle directly in the 2D view. So putting my cursor into the center of the job, I'm going to click with the left mouse key and then using the mouse, I'm just going to drag that out and you can see that I can uh, alter the size of the circle that's being created. And as I'm pulling the circle out, you'll notice that I'm displayed right next to my cursor, the diameter of the circle and it changes as I move it out or in. 
Now I want to go for a diameter of 21 inches, so I'm going to pull that out till I see 21. I'm just going to let go of that uh, mouse, and you'll see that it's input my circle. It's done so with a diameter of 21 inches. Okay, so let's just close out of the form. So now I want to align the circle to the top of the rectangle. I can do that by just simply clicking on it to put it in transform mode and then hover over the top point here and I'm just going to drag that circle up the Y axis until I snap to the top of the rectangle. You can see to zoom by all of the snap lines that I am aligned to the top of the rectangle. If I let go of the left mouse key, you can see it's now snapped to the top of the rectangle. So with this circle, what I'd like to do is apply a few offsets. So with that vector selected, we're going to come over to this tool here where we can create offsets based on our vector that we have selected. So with this vector, I want to offset that outwards by three quarters of an inch. So we're going to use the outwards option. And I'm just going to type in the value there, 0 0.75, and then go ahead and press offset. Okay, so there's my new vector. Okay, now with our original vector still selected, I'd like to create an offset going inwards this time. So we're going to use the inwards option and we're going to offset that inwards by half an inch. Uh, however, this time what I'd like to do is use this option here to select new so that when I create the offset, the new offset vector will then be selected. Offset, so there you can see that we've got the new one selected. And then with that vector, I want to offset that one inwards by four inches. So I'll put four in there, select new, still selected, press offset, and then we're going to offset this one in by half an inch, offset like so. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the rectangle and look at offsetting that outwards by three quarters of an inch. So if that's selected, we're going to go outwards, type in 0 0.75, and this time I want to make sure that create sharp offset corners is switched on, so it creates the sharp corners on our newly offset vector, and I can simply go ahead and press offset. Okay, so that's all the offsets that we need, so I'm just going to close out of the form. And now we're going to look at welding some of these vectors that we've just created to create the border for our magic bean sign. So with this rectangle vector selected, I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard and I'm going to select this outer circle. So these two vectors I want to weld. So with them selected, we'll come over to edit objects. I'm going to use the weld selected vectors and you can see it's done that for us there. And we're going to take this vector here Again, holding down shift, we're going to select this circle here, and again, we're going to use the weld option. So now I have my two welded vectors that represent the border for the magic bean sign. So now what I'd like to do is create some hanging holes for the sign. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and draw in a circle. Now I'm going to snap to this top corner here. I'm going to look at creating this circle using the transform shortcut keys. So the way to do this, I'm going to drag my circle out and with my left mouse key still held down, I'm going to type in a diameter on the keyboard, in which case I want to go with a diameter of one and a quarter. So I'm going to type in 1.25, you can see that value displayed at the bottom, followed by the letter D for diameter and there we go, here's my circle at one and a quarter uh, diameter. So let's just close out there. And now I'd like to move this circle to a position here. Now I'm going to type in exact values for where I want to move this circle to. So with that vector selected, we're going to come over to move selected objects. And here you can see I can put in an absolute value or a relative value. So I want to put in a relative value here, so we're moving it relative to where it currently is positioned. We're going to go with an x value of 2 and a y value of negative 2, so negative 2 in there. Go ahead and press apply, we can see it's moved to the position based on the options that I put in the x and y positions. So let's just close out of that. 
Now I need to create the second hanging hole uh, that needs to be mirrored across the center of our part over to the right hand side. So to do that, we're going to take this vector, we're going to use the mirror option, we're going to flip that about the job center and we're going to flip that horizontally. Okay, so you can see it's moved over, but I've now lost the original vector. And that's because I don't have this option here to create a mirrored copy selected. So if I select that and then go ahead and flip horizontal, you'll see it creates a mirrored copy uh, that's been flipped horizontally about the job center. So let's close out. Now we have our two hanging holes. So now we're going to look at creating a vector that would represent cross section uh, for the border of our sign. So to do that, we're going to use the polyline tool. Using the scroll of my mouse, I'm just going to zoom in on this top left hand corner area here and to click in position to start our line. And we're going to make this a profile half an inch high. So looking at my cursor, I can see we have a length there of 0 0.5. So I'm going to click in place uh, to input that point. And then I'm going to bring this across by three quarters of an inch. So click in position there at three quarters. And I'm going to bring that back down. I want to line this up with our first point. This blue line is telling me that we are now in line with the object bounds of the object we're creating. And if I click here, that's going to uh, be positioned um, in line with our first start point. So right mouse click to come out of the polyline tool and there we have a basic profile cross section. So now we're going to use the node edit tools just to alter the shape of our cross section. So with that selected we're going to go into node edit mode. Okay, so we're going to take this top corner here and we're just going to drag that and you can see that um, I've snapped to the center of our object. I can see that judging by the two blue lines that are running through each other there. If I click, uh, that will input that node into this new position. I'm going to right click over this span here and we're going to change that uh, from a straight span to a bezier span. And then we're going to do the same on this span here, we're going to make that bezier span. And then on this node, we're going to right click and make that a straight point. So we're going to uncheck smooth point. If we just zoom in a little, uh, so we've got um, our two spans. We've got our control handles that have been created from the Bezier curves. And then with these handles, we can move them, and really alter the shape of the vector. Okay, so I'm just lining that up. I'm going to line this up uh, vertically like so. And I'm going to line this up horizontally with uh, the node that it's coming from here. Okay, so I like the shape that we've got there. If you wanted to, you could take a handle, move it out using the left and right arrow keys, depending on how much curve it you want. But I'm happy with the cross section that we have. So we're going to right click to come out of node edit mode. And we'll use this option here to zoom active view to draw in limits. So the next item we're going to look at is a leaf motif that we're going to draw up on the left hand side of the circle here. Before we do that, we're going to look at applying some construction lines just to divide up the circle so we know the different areas that we're working with. As they intend to have text at the top here, text at the bottom there, we're going to have a leaf motif here, then ultimately copy that over and have a leaf motif on the right hand side. So to do that, let's go ahead and go into the draw a polyline tool. So we're going to snap to this point here, so I'm just going to click my left mouse key and then I'm just going to drag this down and snap to this point here, click to accept that. Using the space bar on the keyboard, that enables me to create a new line, in which case I'm going to snap to this point here and then we're going to snap to that point there, right click to come out of the polyline tool. And you can see now I've got my circle divided up into four segments. So now we're going to look at drawing the berry of uh, our leaf design. And using the scroller of my mouse, I'm just going to zoom in on this area here. So this is where we're drawing that leaf motif. Now I want the berry part of the design uh, to be in the center of 
uh, this circle here and this circle here. And so to help me locate that, we're going to look at how the smart snapping enables me to find the midpoint of two, any two given points. So let's go over to draw a circle. Okay, so we're just going to go over here. So I want to wake this point up here. Okay, so you can see I'm snapping to that. I'm not clicking anywhere. I'm just hovering over it. I'm going to drag my mouse out over to the right. You can see we've got that horizontal line. I'm going to wake this point up here. Now I'm going to go back and you can see there we have um, a midpoint. So we've got the gold dotted lines telling me that we found the midpoint of two points. Uh, and I can snap here to create that point there. So we're going to draw out a circle. Okay, So I want it one and a half inches in diameter. So to do that, I could simply just type in 1.5 on the keyboard, followed by the letter D for diameter. And there we have our circle with a diameter of one and a half inches. OK, so let's just close out there. And now we're going to look at drawing the leaf part of our design. So to do that, we're going to go into the polyline tool. So let's go over into the polyline tool and we can begin to sketch in a basic shape. So we're going to start somewhere around here. Just going to go up over here. Uh, we're going to come down somewhere like that. And then we're just going to snap back into position and then we can just close out of the polyline tool. And there we have our basic leaf shape. So to really transform the shape of this leaf, uh, we need to put it into node edit mode. So we're going to select that, we're going to go over into node edit mode, and here we can really transform the shape to make it more organic, make it more smooth, make it look more like a realistic leaf. So we're going to start by smoothing this point here and this point here. The quickest way for me to do this is to just, using my left mouse keys, to drag a box like this. So this is a selection box. I'm going to drag it over the nodes that I want to change. Okay, then I can let go. You can see they're now highlighted red. And then on the keyboard, I'm going to use the shortcut key S for smooth. And that's going to change those points from a straight point into a smooth point and this enables me to really transform uh, each one of these spans uh, where I can uh, nudge and change the way that it looks uh, so it becomes more leaf-like. There's various ways of doing this. So you can start by moving the node itself. Now one thing that might help me here is just by switching off the smart snapping options. As I'm working with an organic shape, I don't need to uh, snap to any form of geometry. I just want to really edit this shape uh, to make it uh, look more leaf-like. Okay, so we can start by bringing in the nodes if we wanted to like so. Uh, we can also look at pulling out the handles. Uh, not only can we pull out the handles, but we can also look at uh, selecting areas of our span. We'll just use uh, those areas to drag out or bring in side. Okay? And with all of these different options, we can really change the shape of uh, the leaf itself. Okay, So I'm just going to bring that down. I'm uh, also going to bring this one down over here. Okay, it's not too bad. If you just click in the white space, you can see what it looks like uh, without seeing all of the handles. And I just simply click back just to uh, put it back into the node edit transform mode there. Um, so here, I'm just going to take this handle and just drag that up. I might take that node, drag that up also. I might look at taking this span over here and just nudging that over there. Uh, and then maybe bringing this one in a little bit. I could look at pulling the handle just to extend that curve there. Click in the white space again just to take a look at how uh, everything's looking. I'm happy with uh, the left side of our leaf. Uh, so I might just tweak with this area here. So I'll click back into there and might be able to zoom in just to nudge that over a little bit just to create more of a smooth curve there. OK, 
Okay, so uh, that's actually not too bad. So I think I'm just going to leave that as that is. We'll right click to come out of node edit mode. And then what we'll do is we'll just zoom uh, to fit the view there. So in a separate tutorial where we would look at modeling uh, this magic bean sign, we'd look at using the two rail sweep to create this leaf, which requires us to have a cross section and two rails to sweep a cross section in between. And so what I need to do is I need to actually put this back into node edit mode and we need to cut this so that we have two separate vectors. So here I'm going to right click on this node here and say cut vector. Right click on this node here I'm also going to use the cut vector option or I could have pressed C as the keyboard shortcut to do that. So now you can see that I've cut that vector into two and we now have two separate vectors. So now what we'd do is we'd look at creating a cross section that would sweep between the two vectors to create the 3D shape of the leaf. So we're going to start by looking at using the ellipse tool. Okay, so I'm going to select that and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at drawing an ellipse. So we're going to go with a width of one and a half inches and a height of 0 0.6 inches. And then we could just go ahead, press create and then we can close out and we can see that it's created that at x0, y0. Okay, so I'm just going to take that, I'm just going to move that over here. I'm going to zoom back in. Now, when we draw cross sections, uh, they must be open vectors. So we need to look at editing this vector. We also want to edit the shape just to give it more of a leaf profile. Okay, so with that selected, let's put that into node edit mode. Now right click on this span here, we're going to delete the span. You can see the keyboard shortcut to delete that span is the letter D. So let's delete that one. And then here I'm just going to use the shortcut, so D on the keyboard. And there we have um, half of the ellipse. We now have an open vector that would work uh, as part of the two rail sweep process. Okay, now I want to edit the shape of this. So all I'm going to do is just box select this node here. And then I'm going to take that node and we're just going to bring that over somewhere around here so that we create this kind of uh, leaf profile cross section. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's just come out of node edit mode um, and then left mouse click again. And then we'll just use this option here to zoom to fit. So now we have our two rails along with our cross section uh, ready to model the leaf in a later tutorial. Next up, we're going to look at creating the fresh coffee text. Ultimately, I want the word fresh to be aligned to this segment here and the word coffee to be aligned to this segment here. So we're going to look at using this circle here to align our text to, but I need to look at chopping it up uh, to fit within uh, the top segment and the bottom segment. So before I do that, I'm going to right click on this circle. I'm going to use the option here to copy to layer, new layer. We're going to call this layer safe. We're going to make that inactive and invisible. So we can go ahead and press OK. If I go to my layers bar at the top, we can see that that layer uh, has been placed there with a copy of that circle. So now with this circle, I can look at editing that using the interactive trim tool where I can just trim the right hand side and the left hand side. We can close out there. Now I'm left with two separate vectors at uh, the top and the bottom for me to align my fresh coffee text to. So to create the text, let's simply go over to the draw text tool. Okay, so I can see that my text is going to be positioned in the center of our job at x0, y0. So let's just go ahead and type in the word fresh and coffee um, on a separate line there. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is look at altering the size. It's far too big at the moment. So let's make that two and a half inches. Look at altering 
the font there okay so there's a font i like called impact so if i press i on the keyboard it's going to take me to the i section of our list i can click on impact and there is the text so let's just close out of there so at the moment this text entity is as one object now i want to break this up into separate lines so to do that i simply right mouse click on the text use this option here break text block into lines so now I have fresh as a separate entity and coffee as a separate text entity so now what I can do is I can take the text and I can align it to the curve so to do that we take fresh shift and select that curve vector that we cropped earlier from that circle I'm going to come over to create vectors and we're going to use the text on a curve wrap text along a curve tool okay and so we can see straight away it's wrapped that using the settings that we have here okay so if we wanted to we could edit the spacing of the text uh, make it further apart make it closer together okay somewhere like that seems okay so we'll put it around there uh, we want that text above the curve, which it is, so that's okay. We want to create a little bit of an offset distance. So we'll go with uh, three quarters of an inch in there. And you can see it's uh, done that for us. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to look at the coffee text. So we're going to take the word coffee, shift, and then we're going to select the curve. Okay, so at the moment it's creating that above the curve. Okay, we want that below the curve. Uh, and again, we want an offset distance of three quarters of an inch to go in there. Uh, and I'm happy with the way that that looks, so we could go ahead and press close. Okay, so not only can we edit the spacing of the text uh, within that form that we was just in, but we could also take the text and use this option here to edit the text spacing and curve. So if we just zoom in on the text, you'll see that my cursor is displaying two arrows that are pointing directly at each other when I'm in between two different characters. Okay, So if I click, it just brings them closer together. And if I hold the shift key down, you'll see that the arrows are pointing away, in which case I can move them further apart. So if I wanted to, I could just bring uh, some of these characters together until it looks OK. We could come up to the top here uh, select the fresh text bring those further closer together even uh, until they looked okay so that looks good so let's just come back into normal selection mode we'll use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits and now we can take a look at selecting all of the construction geometry uh, as we don't need this anymore so with that selected I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard and then in our layers bar, we can um, come over to the safe layer. We're going to look at deleting that layer. Now, when you delete a layer that has data on it, you'll be displayed with this um, information box that's going to tell you that you do have data on that layer. And if you want to, you can move that data. So we're going to move that data back to layer one and then go ahead and press OK. So we now just have one layer and we've got our original circle that we copied over to that safe layer earlier. So now we're going to look at creating some text to sit in the lower portion of our sign. So to do that, let's go over and use the draw text option. So here we're going to type in magic and then followed by beans. Okay, so here I'm just going to bring that over, snap to the center um, of the vertical line there. Uh, so I don't like the font that we've got, I might also alter the height of the text. Uh, so for the font, I'm going to use a font called Cambria. So pressing C on the keyboard will take me to the fonts that begin with the letter C. I'm just going to use a down arrow key until I find that font. So there it is, Cambria. And then we're going to change the height, we're going to make that a little bigger. So we're going to make that four inches uh, and then we can just simply close out there. 
Let's want to bring the word magic and the beans close together. So coming over to create vectors, we're going to look at this tool here, edit text spacing and curve. Uh, and here you can see that I can bring uh, two lines together. You can see we've got two arrows pointing at each other. And if I click, it's going to bring the word magic and beans closer together. Okay, maybe one more. Okay, so that's okay. And then we can just simply put that into normal selection mode. So now I just want to edit the width of the magic beans text. So to do that, I'm going to transform objects, set selected object size. Now I only want to change the width. So I'm going to uncheck this option here to link XY. And then we're going to make the width of this 14 inches. Go ahead and press apply there, close out. And then we're just going to take that. I'm just going to drag that down a little uh, just to even out the space in at the bottom uh, and the bottom of the circle. And choosing the down arrow key, I'll do that again. Okay, so I'm happy with the position of that text there. So the last things to draw up are two coffee beans that are going to sit in the center of this circle here. So to start us off, let's go over to create vectors and we're going to look at drawing an ellipse. I'm going to snap to the center of that circle there. I'm just going to roughly sketch out a shape like that. So this is kind of bean shaped. Right click to come out of the ellipse tool. And then what we could do is we could look at really changing the shape of this. So I'm just going to rotate that around 10, 20 degrees. And then I'd like to alter the shape of this so we can make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to hold down shift uh, to keep this in proportion when I scale it out. I'm just dra dragging that middle handle there. And then shift on this bottom handle just to stretch that out a little on the top there. Uh, and then what we could do is we could just nudge this down. Now I'd like to create a copy of this bean. So to do that, I'm going to hold down control and I'm just going to move a copy out there. So control creates a copy whilst we're dragging items in transform mode. So when you see uh, all of these handles, that means we're in transform mode and we can change the shape of the object. In which case I want to make this a little bit smaller. So holding on to any one of the corners, I'm going to hold down shift. We're just going to shrink that down ever so slightly uh, to something like this. Then what we could do is we could look at maybe rotating it. Uh, and then we could just click out to take a look at what we've got there. I might want to take that and just nudge that up a little bit. And I may want to actually make this a little bit bigger. So again, taking the corner handle, holding down shift, I'm just going to nudge that out like so. Okay, so that's the two beans. Uh, then we're going to take those two beans and then I want to make sure we're aligned to the centre of our circle. So to help me there, I just need to turn on the smart snapping options uh, so I know that I'm aligning myself to the circle there. And it seemed that we were already aligned to the circle, so that's all good. Okay, so uh, we want to make some edits to the smaller bean. So we're just going to use uh, this vector and then this option here to zoom acted view to selected objects. Okay, so you can see we've zoomed right in on that vector. I'm just going to move out uh, just by one scroll on the mouse there. And if you're just going to put this into node edit mode, and I'm just going to insert a point here. So right click, insert point, or I could press I on the keyboard. So I'm going to insert another point here by pressing I. And then I'm just going to take that and just bring that in a little to create this kind of coffee bean uh, edge. And we'll right click to come out of node edit mode, and we'll just zoom out a little. Uh, the last thing I want to do is apply a crease to this coffee bean here. So to do that, I'm going to use the Draw Polyline tool. And we're just going to roughly sketch in a shape like this. And then we'll take it back. So top tip here is if you press Tab whilst in the Polyline tool, that will close uh, the vector that you've created there. So we can close out. And then in here, we could go to Node Edit Mode and we could look at smoothing these points. And then maybe adjusting uh, the shape of the vector by pulling on the handles and pulling on uh, the actual span itself. Okay, so pull on the handle there, uh, zoom in a little, pull on that one, 
bring this one down, bring that out. Uh, right, just click in the space just so you can see what that looks like. And then we'll use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits to take a look at the sign as a whole. Right click to come out of no edit modes that are in normal transformation mode. So there we've created the finished magic bean sign. To learn how we use these vectors to then model and machine this sign, then you'd need to watch the modeling and toolpath in videos, which can be found in the related videos section.